Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Uh, well, welcome to this seventh uh, annual event where we can see the Startup Mentoring Network. Uh, well, my name is Miguel Carretero. I'm the, uh, the Network Manager Mentor. Uh, manager, sorry. The Mentoring Network Manager. Uh, as, uh, as we can see, before I start with the three panels that, that we have, I would like to introduce uh, a few data uh, from the network mentor uh, that we are working and to explain about the different projects that we have helped during this year, okay, and related with the different mentors that has uh, collaborated with the, with the different projects. Okay, so during the last 12 months, uh, we have supported more than 50 projects from the community of Madrid. That means that our projects that have applied to our mentoring network, and they are looking for mentoring support. Uh, also, we have created or we have give, been managing 35 projects, 35 teams, okay? That means that our projects that have assigned a mentor with the uh, founders of the startups, so they, are, they have been working in this, in this part, in this project. After that, we created nine teams uh, from the last two events that we created in the, during this, this year. And also we have created eight kickoff meetings. That means that is the, the first meeting between the mentors and the founders of the company, okay? Uh, also, we had two events during the last two months. And these two events are mainly the call that you create and we filter with the different startups of the community of Madrid. And also we have the mentors on the other side and we try to find this match, okay? We give the opportunity to the startup to prepare or to, to have a pitch of the project in order to detect the different mentors that they can, can apply, okay? And the last two ones, it was in, in November 2021, and in the month of March 2022, it was the last event, okay? The next uh, event, the next uh, event between the mentors and the, and the project will be at the end of, of this month, okay? Obviously, in each event, we have like 10 or 12 projects that they are integrated to the, to the network, okay? And also, just to finish, before I start with the three panels that we have today, just uh, say that we have uh, joined to the Madrid uh, network 10 new mentors, okay, that they support with the different projects that we, that we, that we create. And finally, that, uh, well, I, I had a, a little presentation, but it was a, a, a problem. And I also had the, the picture of the different mentors that they enter in the, the joint to the, to the network. And finally, the 16 companies that they participate in the two last uh, 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 events, okay? So, uh, we start with the first panel, okay? We have three panels. The first one will be related with the trends at good practice that uh, from the, in the mentoring uh, network with the startups, okay? So, we have the opportunity to introduce Silvia Perez and Alexis Garberis, okay? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so the idea today, they are mentors from the network, uh, Madrid Mas de Network, okay, mentoring network, and the idea is that they could fail with you the, the main trends and good practices that mentors apply with the different startups, with the different projects, okay, so maybe Silvia, could you start to explain the different uh, trends that mm -hmm. nowadays should apply, maybe yeah. in your case or maybe in a global mm -hmm. uh, uh, sector. Yeah, well, thanks a lot, Miguel, for, for the introduction, and well, thanks a lot for inviting me for to, to be here. It's a pleasure. So, um, regarding trends, regarding trends in mentoring, what, what I believe is that we, we can make a difference uh, if, we, uh, if we are talking about mentoring within, within a particular structure, incubation or acceleration program that needs to be covered particular objectives, and mentoring with a startup on an ad hoc basis uh, that you just work with, with, this, uh, with this startup one-to-one. Um, uh, -one. Talking about the structure uh, mentoring within, a, with a, within an acceleration program, 
I've seen the several trends that are quite common, follow a pattern that, uh, that normally works. So first of all, having um, a generalist mentor and a specialist mentor. So it's very, something that works very good is um, uh, having a generalist mentor to do a follow-up with a particular KPIs and, and so on, uh, to have a global overview of the project, and then they have dedicated sessions with specialist uh, mentors uh, that uh, part, they deal with particular topics like uh, a business plan, IP, or um, uh, giving a pitch, or whatever. So both type of mentors uh, can live together and, sh and should live together. Um, uh, it was very good because in the normal follow-up of, uh, of uh, the work with the startup, a uh, generalist mentor can identify the best moment to incorporate in the floor uh, the specialist mentor and give this extra boost. So that's, that's one trend. Second, another trend is also how many mentors in the, in the mentoring session. So uh, I've seen normally that it's, uh, just one mentor is, uh, is, a, is a good number, like uh, either generalist or, or specialist. But there are other programs where a team of mentors with complementary expertise can also work uh, very well. It's more complex to manage, but it, it, can, it can work. And finally, I also would like to mention one trend that is all over the world uh, uh, in this, since the pandemic uh, uh, came to, to us, that is the virtual mentoring. So I, I believe that the virtual remote mentoring has, a, has started to be the normal thing, and it has opened up a lot of the possibilities for the accelerators, programs, to the incubators to expand the, the network. So they can offer much more variety to the startups to, to receive good mentoring. Okay, perfect. And what related with the good practice in, in your, in your or, yeah, in your side, maybe with your own experience, okay, yeah. related with your mentor? Yeah, so I think that Sylvia addresses a lot of good points. Uh, specifically, talking about um, uh, structured mentoring, like with organizations, I think that running a methodology, it's, uh, I think that is a, a good practice at some point, but. I think that it's important to understand what is a good uh, uh, methodology, no? because I think that not each, any methodology uh, could, could fit in any startup. So at some point, it's important to understand which kind of methodology. Let me, let me give you like an example. No? So when I have meetings with entrepreneurs, I try in the very beginning to set up some uh, objective or agenda for this, for this meeting, and then the desirable uh, outcome of the meeting. So at some point, I tried to do to make some experiment, not to follow this uh, this methodology. And the result was maybe 40% of the meetings were really bad, 40% were okay, and 20% were absolutely astonishing results. The, my conclusion is, when you have a methodology, you are setting up like a, a minimum product of this. Uh, meeting, so you can reduce the the meeting when you don't have a good result. So I think that implementing a, a methodology, no matter which one, and could fit with the each and uh, startup, it's uh, like a good practice for any program. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And uh, maybe with minimum conditions, do you consider that are necessary to have a uh, a successful mentoring with, with different projects? I mean, what are the main points that, that you say it should be mandatory? Well, it's a good question. So let me share another experience of mine. So during, I, I, I've been five years in Silicon Valley, uh, uh, starting up a company and helping uh, some entrepreneurs. And uh, I've been a lot of time, like, I was invited to like a chat in a lot of pitch context. So at this point I, l I learned a lot because I found that when you, you see a team you, that they cannot explain the problem they try to, the very clear, the, pro the problem they are try trying to address, they cannot uh, make a deliver a, a compelling value proposition or, they, uh, or even explain the solution, at some point I feel that this team has not have a very good mentorship uh, or a lack of mentorship. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I think that if you are a mentor, you, can, you have to work with that. And you have to, 
even if you are a generalist that helps the team to deliver a presentation, or you have to introduce the team for some specific person because it's your reputation that mm -hmm. it's in place. So you, as a mentor, I, I will not introduce anyone for this team if the team has not at least the three things very clear. Huh? I think that regarding, yeah, this, uh, I totally uh, agree with, with Alexia on this point. But in the conditions like to, to perform like a um, successful mentoring, what I've seen that also so really important is you as a mentor play like the devil's advocate role all the time. So it's, um, it's necessary that you, every time you question uh, your mentee, uh, challenge him or her, or, or her and uh, all, try to establish a lot of what if scenarios. So try in, or, in order to make the mentee think of all the possibilities that they, they, they may, he or she has maybe not considered in order to be better prepared. Um, also, I'm talking about the team. I think that is, it's also very important that even if you have a methodology, like a generalist, that okay, you have a basis, you have to cover maybe some points, um, for example, the business plan or maybe the, the technology development plan or whatever, Always, you as a mentor uh, need to pay attention to the team of the, of the startup. It's because, um, as we all know, uh, many startups fail because of team problems. So uh, it's really important that you, um, in the mentoring sessions, it's an excellent opportunity to pay attention of what is the type of relationship that there are uh, in the team members, with there are maybe some misalignments or some conflicts that are not solved. So if you detect something like that, uh, stop, give, ex give honest feedback to the, to the mentees because it can help them a lot. Um, and also for a con uh, minimum conditions also for, for this uh, good uh, mentoring sessions, what I've seen also is, is really um, works really good, is to apply some good practices from the coaching discipline. So like for example, establishing rapport. So, the, so that means that just take three, five minutes during the, at the beginning of the session, of the mentoring session, to, to generate confidence with the, with the mentee. Talk about anything, but uh, this, uh, this type of rapport, this type of good atmosphere helps a lot during the mentoring session, like to, uh, the, to deal it in a very efficient way, and it bats more smoothly, and, and the results really, really, really change. Okay, perfect. In your experience, uh, related maybe with the, with the advices that you could give to the, to the mentees, to the different teams, maybe related with the relationship or something else, uh, how are they reacting to, to these advices? They are agreeing, they are maybe having some changes, or maybe they are more... <laughs> okay, uh, so at some point I think that each startup is unique, each entrepreneur has their <coughs> own and, uh, DNA, and uh, the art of the mentorship is to understand how to add value for these specific startups. It's not one fits all. So the mentorship is not one fits all. Mm -hmm. So I think that you have to understand how to, so the entrepreneur has like a gut feeling. And it's very important because at some point uh, startups are chaos. And it, that's okay, it's not a corporation. Mm -hmm. They have to move be, uh, among the chaos. But at some point, as a mentor, you have to understand how to move on this mm -hmm. curve with your methodology, with your objectives, or whatever. But from my perspective, this is the most important, how to work with uh, an entrepreneur and uh, different startups. Yeah. In yes, sure. yeah, no, just to compliment what Alex is saying, I'm, I totally agree, and also, I've, I've seen like we have very good uh, reactions to the to the to the feedback, but uh, something that is uh, is also important is sometimes the mentees way that uh, you to make decisions. Uh, so maybe you uh, and that's that's a mistake, but because uh, you as a mentor never should make decisions. You can give uh, a lot of information. You can maybe yes, it's important the way you talk to them. Like okay, from my experience, this and this works or doesn't work. So this is a case study that you can evaluate. But uh, sometimes they really expect that you make the decision for, uh, for, for him or her. So this is sometimes it, it's difficult to, to explain at the beginning. But once they understand, okay, it's my responsibility, it's my accountability, then the relationship also works better, the mentorship works better. But in general, they, they appreciate the, the feedback and, the, and they, they want a lot of advices, but sometimes they confuse the, the point between advice okay, and, uh, and a decision making. Yes, yeah, of course. I, I think that it's important that we identify the good tr the trends, the good practice, uh, 
uh, be read, but at the end, in, in the practical case, we need that the mentor and not be read the mentees uh, agree and have a connection with the, with the mentor. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we have a, a problem and it's not working the, the mentoring. So, okay, I think that we are <coughs> out of time. I'm not really sure because we start with a few. But thank you, thank you so much for your support for the panel. I hope you enjoy with this participation. And now we can move to the next panel. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you very much. <laughs> Yeah.